main mix. Okay, we're recording again. Alright, so the question is inserting into the main output. Because right. the main output D sub to the X16 also has the main the insert point. Where was that? Yeah. Right there it's got, on the left. Yeah, it's yeah. got the main output left and right, then it's got the main the mixed insert send left and right on that same D sub. That's right. Okay? So that D sub right now is going into 9, 10, 11, 12 on the X16. Right. And that's why we see four, that's why in the console software, we're seeing, we're seeing four. four, we're seeing four channels of audio. Yeah, and we're also seeing the fact that that one set was not reacting to the fader because that's a send point. That's a send pre -fade. point. Pre-fade. Right. So that's why that's not reacting to the fader. But the question then becomes, that's, that's the mix insert that we want the fusion to go into. Right. Now, right. where is the return on that? Mix bus insert return is on a separate D sub. Right. There. Yeah, there it is. So what we're going to end, the only way I can figure to do it would be to have the main output go into the patch bag and then normal, uh, normal that, but then I guess we, we, that, would, that would give us an insert point. So we would actually have to run both of those D subs to the patch bag. Right. And then jumper the insert to the fusion and then back in. And then just and then have the, the an output on the patch bay going into the X16. But see that still that doesn't get that doesn't get you there. That doesn't get us there. Because then because we're still screwed on the main outs. The main outs are going Unless we unless we jumper the main outs to a different D sub on the patch, we're going to need more one patch bag. Unless you D sub the the you jumper the main outs to a different D sub on the patch bay, and then that sends to the X sixteen. Uh, yeah, that might work. Yep, yeah, that might do it too. But that seems like a a complicated way to do it. It's ridiculous, but if you want to use that insert point, right. that's how you get it. Well. We'll ask, we'll ask SSL. Yeah. We'll, I got that written down. We'll ask them just to be sure we're not thinking about this wrong. Yeah. But that's the problem with D-Sub. I mean, it's nice because the cabling isn't as crazy. Yeah. But because you have all eight channels in one connector, yeah. if you only need two of them, how do you get to the other two? And in all honesty, to be perfectly blunt, the main outs should have their own D-Sub. That's right. Just one D-Sub simply for the main outs. Right. Because that way you're not sharing anything with them. Right, because they have it, the main outs and then the yeah. insert. Yeah, then, then you could put, you could put the, because you do need the sends and returns on two different D subs to go into a patch right. bag. that's right. Right? So, so what you're looking at there then is, is you would have to have your sends and returns on one pair of D subs and you have to have right. one dedicated D sub to the output. Right. At the end. Right. Which they don't have, which is screwing us up now. Right. That's right. So, yeah. Okay, that'll be a question for us to sell, I yeah, guess. for sure. Okay, so what we got accomplished then is we got we got it all figured out. We got the audio out, we got it to the board, we figured out how to, we don't know the busing quite yet, but yeah. we'll, we got to ask that question. Mm -hmm. But we have audio, and then the only other piece to this is the patch bay piece for the hardware, and that's another, that's another, once we've talked to SSL and... Yeah, we that, got. That's a whole other thing. Because we got to get. We, we want to figure out how to get the busing. Because the busing is going to be. The busing is going to. There's insert points for the buses as well, which right. have to go to the patch, patch bag. Right. So there's going to be probably two or. There's either two or four D subs to the patch bag for the insert points for the hardware. Right. Send and return. Well, there's going to be four. Yeah. Four D subs. But we, we don't need to. We don't need to route. We don't need to wrap the bus audio anywhere. We just need to do an insert point on each bus. For the hardware. For the hardware. Correct. So right. have that out and back in. And then the buses feed into the stereo out, which we want to feed into the fusion. Right. 
So what we got to first figure out, how do we get the individual tree? We know how to route them to the bus, but then we can't hear the audio. Yeah, we're not, yeah, we, Somehow, we're, we're doing what the book says to do, but right. we're not getting audio out of the bus. System. Out of the so bus. we're missing a step here somewhere. Right. We're so missing a point. So that's one problem. That's one problem. And then the next problem will be, once we figure that out first, yeah. Oh, by the way, we're not panning either. We don't know why. Well, we're not panning. That's right. We <laughs> yeah. can't. The panning, everything is staying in the center for some reason. Yeah. We're not panning. No matter where we put the pan knobs, everything's up the middle. So right. there's something. We're missing something. Something there. on the something on the panning isn't quite. Although, when I did the, the vocals, I got those to pan. Really? Yeah. Because I'm not getting the drums to pan at all. So we'll have to look at that. So there might yeah. there might be something in Studio One. Maybe we have something not quite right there. Yeah, could be. Um, yeah, we'll have to figure that out. So once we we got to get the drums to the bus, which we've done, now we got to be able to hear the bus audio, which we can't right now. Right. Then we got to figure out the panning, why some of the panning doesn't seem right. Yeah. That's one set of issues. Once that's done, then we, before we even talk about the hardware, we are now able to get everything out across the board. Yeah. We got to dial in the template. So it makes a little more sense. Um, and we oh, and we also figured out how to print audio back into Studio One. So we got it through out through the main outs. Yeah. We're going back in and we're able to do a print track. Yeah. So we can bring audio out, mix it with EQ, um, no set levels, set levels, gain stage it, run it through the bus compressor back into Studio One. That we can do right now. That's fixed. Right. Um, we figure out the busing. We figure out the panning. Yeah, and then, most, most of our issues now are in the board itself. What's that? Most of the issues we're having now are in the board itself. Right, and then once we're done with that, then the next thing is, okay, how do we incorporate the patch bay and the hardware in all the insert points? Yeah. That's a separate project. Yeah. Because um, that's going to probably be more involved. We may need more cabling, probably. Yeah, we're going to need a lot more b sub cables. Which is fine. Yeah. Um, but this is no, we this is great. We, we yeah. got we got sound that we, we can we can run it in and run it back into Studio One and print the mix. We can do that. Yeah, day one. Day one. <laughs> I mean, this, is the, this is the first day of us actually turning it on and passing audio, which is great. Yeah. So I think maybe what what we ought to do now is somehow try to before we add at another date a bunch more cable to this. Yeah. And try to somehow while it's still manageable. Clean this mess Clean up. Clean it up, cable tie it, stack it, make it look as good as we can. And then honestly, to be honest, probably only spend, you know, until we, I would probably like us to have a few different session days where we're just working with what we have. Yeah. And forget the hardware for now. Oh yeah. Just we, we, we can use the SSL native plugins for all the compression in the, in the, in Studio One. Right. We can EQ everything on the board and we can print stuff back in and we can just use, use this as like a big summing mixer with some EQ for now. Yeah. And then once we get that under our belts and we understand how to navigate through the board, then we can take on the whole, the whole thing with the patch bay and all the hardware and how to insert that. Well, we need tech support on that, too. So. We're going to need some tech support on that, especially on the Fusion piece. And once we figure it out on the Fusion, it should just be duplicated with everything else. It shouldn't be that big of a deal. Yeah. So I think we're, I think, oh, then we can, yeah, we can push the console back. We can get, kind of get the speakers where we want to get them. Yeah. Because that's not a big deal. We'll clean yeah. all this up, and then we call it a day. Yeah, no matter what, we're going to be back. We're going to be patching in cables all over. Probably. Well, yeah. probably, my guess is probably not more than another, well, well, probably eight, maybe eight more. Yeah. Well, if, it, well, if it comes over to the patch bay, then everything yeah. would be from the gear to the patch bay. Yeah, because there's, there's the, the stereo group, the groups, right? Yeah, which we don't need the actual group outputs, we need the group inserts. So that's two D subs. Yeah, so you got a group insert point, group insert point, that's two. Yeah. Output. Okay, yep. Yeah. Bus output, bus in, bus group, yeah, stereo group inputs. Yeah, it's going to be at least four for the buses. Yeah. Four D subs. It's going to be four D subs for the buses. Okay. And then we're probably going to need one more for the main insert, no matter what. Because it's going to be there's two D subs for the main out right. the main insert points. So that'll be three. That'll be so four. So that's three. That's four, five more cables. Five more cables. We're not going to use any of the D subs for the 
for the buckets, but we're not putting hardware on the individual yeah. channels. Yet. At this point, do we really need the do we need the, the direct outs at this point? No, that's what I'm thinking. I don't know. Yeah. We need one. We need one out. We did that through yeah. the print track. We yeah, we, we took we took one away already. I mean, unless unless you're going to start printing tracks back into Studio One, the only thing I think we, we would don't ever, need any direct outs. No, well, the only thing I think we would print back in would be the the groups. Right. So the direct outs, the three that we have hooked up to the direct outs right now, mm -hmm. could be repurposed. That's true because we don't need to print individual tracks right. back yeah. in. We don't need direct outs out of the channel. Right. So you have three here now that we could repurpose because we have one already repurposed to the main out. Right, so we would only need to buy one more cable, technically. Two more. Four for the groups and then the one the right. one insert line. So you need you need five more cables. We got three we can use, we need two more cables now. D sub to D sub. D sub to D sub. Okay, that I don't have. I got D sub to XLR, but that's Yeah, we got and those are all patch bay cables. Those are all patch bay cables. Yeah. Okay, so we need three more? Yeah, you need three more. D no, you need, you need two more D sub cables because we're repurposing three. Right. Okay. So we're gonna have our our. Items. And you may as well get ten floaters if you think. Yeah. Now that we know that. Yeah. We no, press fifteen. We got slack galore. Right. On 15. So we need three. Right. Three. Yeah. You need you need two more cables because we're repurposing three. We need five two more total. Ten foot. D sub to D sub. D sub, D sub, and that'll get us with the that'll get the that'll stereo get group ins and outs back at the studio one. and the main put the main insert back in. Right. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. And then, and then right because we don't need unless we were going to report individual tracks. Which yeah. Back in which th that's down the road. That's probably way down, way down the road. road. Yeah. Be able to print the, the groups in. Yep. When, when needed, yep. fine. Um, okay, well, no. All I'm saying right now is for the, for the group ins and outs, to get group insert points for the hardware. Right. That's four cables. If you want to send audio off of the groups back in, that's two more. Okay. Yeah, well, we should I should probably do that. Yeah. Is it two more or is it four more? No, it's two. It's one, two, two more. Eight, nine, yeah, there's because, right. yeah, each one is a, each so, one is So eight. we need four 10 foot yeah. cables. So you need four 10 foot B subs, and that'll get us, that, that'll let us then send audio back in direct into the X16. And that lets us repurpose the other three. Right. And we can repurpose the three direct us that we're not okay. using. Okay. So then we'll be able to print the eight groups, print the groups back in. Yep. And we'll be able to then insert. The other ones are going to put patch bay to insert all the hardware on the groups, which is all we're really doing. Yeah, that's all we want. That's all yeah. we want. We don't need compressors and stuff on individual yeah. channels. That's not. Yeah, I mean, any 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 board. any channel processing we need to do beyond what's available on the board has got to be done in, in the, the box. box. And that's that was the original plan. Yeah. Okay, so that's not bad. It's only four no, cables. No, four more cables. That's not a big deal. Three, three, seven, seven more total, and that should give us all the insert points we need to get yeah. everything done we want to do. Pretty much. Is one patch bay going to be enough? I hate well, to throw that out. It's there. a ninety-six point, which is forty-eight. It's it's um, I think so. For now, I think it is. Yeah, because it's going to be sixteen, sixteen out, sixteen back on the subs. Right. Right. So sixteen out, sixteen back on the subs. So that's thirty-two. And there's going to be some oh, and kind then, of... And then all the hardware. Yeah, and, and and then all the hardware, so let's just double it to 64. So, yeah. So, we would need another one. Because that's only a 48. That's a 96 point. That's 48. Well, I'm thinking points. Oh, you're thinking points. I'm okay. thinking points. Okay, yeah. so 64, that's a 96 point. Should be enough. Should, should be enough. Should be enough. Even, even, even if we, we have, even a couple if we have another, to... Another couple of pieces of gear, you still have enough. Yeah, and even if we have to do something with the mains the insert point right we, we still have enough to do that so with one, one patch so bay. one patch bay, we have that already okay. right okay so we're good okay so in the patch bay and the hardware that's a whole other right so that's, that's like i said that's so another day so another say at this point four more d subs and we should be able to get everything set up okay we got to find out how we hook in the or fusion. if we can even can and how to get the cabling in and out because there does not appear to be any cable channeling inside the board oh, if the fusion good. has to stay in the rack the fusion has to stay in the rack and that's not a that's not a it's not a problem. It's not yeah. a showstopper. That was like, oh, it'd be cool if it was there because we have the space for it to be there. Yeah. But honestly, it doesn't really need to be there. Yeah. Um, and then, 
I mean, hell, then maybe we could put the... Then you could put the, we could put the faders in. If that's the case, if, if the fusion has to stay in there, right. you have the faders, put them in. Well, I don't think so because, you know, SSL showed on their website, they put a 500 series rack in there. Okay, that, then there has to be a way to insert way. If they're it. doing that, you yeah. know... Then, then there has to be a way to insert to it. we got to find out how they get it. Right. I mean, because I'm not, I'm looking for an access panel and I'm not seeing one. Yeah, you know, I'd have to crawl into the thing, it might be yeah. who knows, but we can could, we could figure that out. So I think yeah. now, like you said, if we can cable manage, get it in, push back, and get the speakers kind of in the optimal place, because this yeah. thing is so easy to move, yeah. that we can just move it out when we need to yeah. to plug everything in. So let's literally, let's just unplug the whole board again. Let's shut the whole thing down, unplug the whole board. And then one cable at a time. Get one this, cable at a time. This, I yep. got all the cable ties. Okay. Especially since now that we know it works. Let's give everyone an update on where we're at now. So we are here. We're here. <laughs> so all the cable management's done, and for the most part, we got the board back, the speaker somewhat in position, and we spent about a half an hour working on the template. So we have um, a very specific template on how we're going to route each individual track to the board using the first 24 faders. Um, 25 to 32 will be reserved for yeah, effect good. returns for reverbs and delays and stuff in, which we haven't gotten to yet. And then in Studio One, we set up a template, which I'll, we'll do a whole other video on, where we set all the inputs and more importantly, all the outputs. So we know every track has to be routed to an output because every track, regardless of what it is, has got to make its way down to the console in order to be part of the mix to break back into Studio One. So for example, the bass we have on one track, but if there's three bass tracks or two bass tracks, you would blend those in Studio One, and that would be routed to a mono output and come onto one fader on the board. So there is still blending that has to be done here, and I think the template will change over time as we start to work with it more, trying to figure out what makes sense to group and what doesn't make sense to group, or what's convenient and what's not convenient. But the most important thing is that we eventually figure out the layout on the console, whatever order those audio tracks are in, it has to be the same for every single session. You don't want to be changing that from one session to another. So if you have percussion on channel 9 and 10, but you're working on a session that doesn't have percussion in it, then I think you would just take 9 and 10 and pull the faders down and just be done with it. or else. You'll have to reset up a template every time you do a mix. You'd have to yeah. reset everything up, right? Yeah, you would. You would have. You'd have to change all of your routing every or time. rename everything every time it changes. So the idea would be to have enough channels set up in the template that you're covering your bases on any right. possible mix. If you're leaving a fader down, like in this mix right here, we don't. We're not using electric guitar three and four. Right. There's only two electric guitar tracks, right. and uh, we're not using tom three because there's only two toms. Right in this one. Yep. In this one. So those so those channels at this point are not being used. Right. But like the the case of it then would be is like we're not going to reroute everything down one channel because we want to have them all together. Having right. a, having an empty space is not going to hurt anything. In this nope. case. But what would but what would could be a challenge is if you had something where let's say you had four Tom tracks in that song. I mean it's uncommon, but it could happen. Yeah. So then you're going to have to start considering grouping the Toms. 
right. as a stereo group right. out on Tom 1 and 2. Right. And then just have Tom 3 down. So you, so some things may have to be tweaked. Yeah, you're gonna, there's some tweaking is going to have to happen. Or, again. or you have multiple templates set up. You could do that too, yeah. You could, especially like, because we are at the present moment limiting ourselves to 24 channels. 24 channels because we're, le we're leaving the last eight channels for four stereo returns, reverbs, and delays. Because e if you, even though you're going to use plugins, that still has to route out and end up back on the board in order to blend it in, right? Because everything has got to end up on the board as the last destination before it goes back in as a stereo print track. Right. So if we had four reverbs and delay combinations, that's stereo that takes up eight physical faders. So we left the last eight faders. But as we talked about, this board is capable of actually 64 tracks of mix down, not 32. There's 32 long faders and there's 32 short faders, which we're not using any of right now. But in order to do that, we need more IO. Yeah. So we're considering getting one more eight in, eight out IO just for the effect returns. And then that will free up the last eight channels on the board. It gives 32 yeah. long faders of audio. Yeah, and then we can, if we had extra tracks. Yeah, because we can assign those eight tracks, the, the effect returns to the short faders. Yeah. Freeing up the long faders for the actual channels. Correct. So that would, that would free up, we would then be able to do 32 track templates Right. With still eight send re eight, eight returns, which should be enough. Should be enough for most yeah. mixes. That's going to yeah. be plenty. Especially because most of the most of the outboard processing is getting done through the through the subs. Right. And you're only going to be doing effects returns on, like you said, reverbs and delays, probably on vocal tracks and so on and so forth. Yeah. You know? So even if you add four of those, if you yeah. had one for vocals, what you could even do one for your instruments. Yeah. One for your vocals. One for your background vocals. I mean, you know, you, you yeah. got enough. Yeah. And you would have, you would have like, a, you'd have like a drum reverb, guitar reverb, lead vocal reverb, right. background vocal reverb, or, key, or keyboards or something yeah. like that. Yeah. You, there's going to have to be some selecting right. of, you know, right. Unless this you, track's not getting it. Unless you, know? you want, unless you want more IO. Right. So, so you really only limit this board. Only limit this board is not limiting at all. What you're limited to is how much inputs and outputs you patch into it. Right. So if you had 64 channels of ins and outs, then you could do, you, you, you can do anything. Yeah. You can do it. But, you know, you got to remember, that, you know, guys like Andrew Sheps, Chris Lord Algae, they do everything out in 44 tracks maximum. Yep. So, and they're using stereo returns on their boards. Yes. So we, we should, I think if we got one more bank of eight and put those eight returns on the small faders, 32 tracks. Yeah. There'll be enough consolidation. That should be fine. For well, the most that, part. that would actually give us way more tracks than we would need. You know, for most mixes, we have more tracks than we need. Yeah, yeah. Twenty-four tracks is about a mix. That's about a mix. You're right. So if you add eight more tracks and you have a lot more flexibility in that, and then you still have your eight returns. Right. And the other thing that we did is we, um, in, as far as our preliminary gain staging, is we decided to normalize all the audio in, in the DAW. And then drop, we normalized it to zero, and then we put a clip gate on it and took it down to negative 18. So everything is hitting the console at negative 18. Don't know if that'll probably may go up a little hotter. And that gives us the ability to use the drive on the preamp on the console to bring up the level if you want to get some coloration from the drive circuit on this particular preamp. So now we're hitting the board um, all at the same level, which is negative 18. And then you can boost it up with the preamp from there. And that might change a little, but that's that's at least where we're starting. Yeah, um, I mean, it's, it's a good starting point, though. Yeah, it's a great it's starting, a good starting point. point. I mean, if we go up to like negative 12, we'll be hitting each channel a little bit harder. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're getting up a little bit closer to hitting to hitting peak. But I mean, I don't know. A noise floor really is not an issue. No, nope, that's not going to be an issue. So, so we it'll don't be, really. It'll be finding the yeah. sweet spot yeah. on that, okay. and that can change also from mix to mix. You just go in, select all your tracks, normalize it. And then, you know, group everything, take your clip gain, and you can easily change the clip gain from negative 18 to negative 12, just like that. Yeah. If, if you have a certain mix or something very uh, Well, if you're, a mix, if, if, you're, yeah, if you're mixing like a six or an eight track song, you can right. push it up a you lot You push harder. it up a lot harder, right? This is assuming we're using all 24 channels yeah. on this particular mix. Mm -hmm. um, and that's our starting point. Everything's going through the bus compressor. We haven't printed anything back. We haven't even touched the EQ yet. We're just, yeah. we're just trying to get 
our heads around the, the, the routing. The, the, routing, the routing, routing is the big thing right now. Oh, and we figured out why it wasn't panning. We're not going to say anything about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, we figured out the, <laughs> we figured out the p it pans. Don't hit um, solo and expect it to pan. Right. Okay, move on. <laughs> um, the only thing we have not figured out yet was how come we, we can route groups to the buses, but we can't hear the buses out of the mains for some reason. Yeah. It's got to just be a, a switch or something we're missing here. Um, although we did press all the switches, and then we've <laughs> done we've done it several times according to the book, and it still does not work. Right, so it's got to be something really silly that we're missing. Yep. Um, and then that's it. And then the only thing that you would print back into the DAW would be your two-track mix out of your mix bus compressor, and once we buy another five, four or five P sub cables, we need that'll, more time. that'll allow us to print the eight stereo groups back into stems. So you can print a process drum stem bass, guitars, vocals, and all of that, um, which is handy. You, you could print each individual track process back in, but we're not set up that way. Um, and it's a lot more cabling that way too. I don't. And we would need more I.O. And you would need more I.O. because some of the I.O. is chewed up by the, by the subgroups and by the main speaker outputs in order to get that two track yeah. back in. Yeah. But I mean, again, at, that's at, kind yeah, of at, at this point we're at this point, we're going to be using, if we get this working, we're going to be using 16 tracks of I.O. for the subgroups yeah. and two track I.O. For, for the main outs. So that's 18 of the, thir of the 32 of the tracks you have available just in what we're going to be doing here. Right. So to do any more than that, we would need at least one more X16. Yeah, which I don't know that no. we're really going to need that. I mean, I, I can't see that we're going to print in a, a kick track back yep. in processed. Yeah. I mean, that would... I can't see that would ever happen. Um, the stems, yeah, I can see printing the stems back in. Definitely. But yeah. not printing back in the individual tracks. At no. least I don't see a situation where that would come up. But yeah. again, this desk, you can do that. If, if you had the right I.O., you can do all of that if yeah. you really wanted to. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we accomplished a lot today. I mean, this is, I don't know what this video is going to look like by the time I'm not editing it, but we've done it. It's going to be a mess, guys. Be a mess. Sorry. <laughs> but. For what in the first day after it's been put into the room, we got audio routed in and out, a template figured out, a preliminary game stage plan for coming into the board, be able to print the stereo mix back in, and the only thing we need to figure out are the eight, the, the group assignments. We need we need to find out the groups, and then we want to start figuring out how to patch in hardware. Well, hardware. yeah. Now we didn't even touch. This we have a patch bay that we think will be enough a 96 point patch bay, but we need some more D sub cables to do that, mm -hmm. um, and that's that's another that's that's a full day in and of itself. I think we want to work with this a bit um, and just you know this is this is a great start. And then you know within a, I think once in a couple of weeks once we figure it all out we'll have the patch bay that'll be a day or two. We'll get all that wired up and the way we're thinking that the hardware is going to be set up it's going to be really kind of dedicated chains for now we're not going to although we'll be able to but we're not going to have it set up so we can pull move pieces of gear in and out on all the different tracks although that's what a patch base typically for mm -hmm. but we want to start simple we want to leave the same drum bus compressor on the drum bus the same bass compressor on the bass bus and just kind of go down like that for now <clears throat> and then you know Phase three will be, okay, if there's more gear down the road and we want to move things around, if we want to try a different compressor on an acoustic guitar and we want to choose one one of three compressors, we'll be able to do all of that in a patch bay. But that's kind of a little bit more, a lot more cabling is needed to make all that happen. And another patch bay. And another patch bay, at least one more for sure. For maybe sure. maybe yeah. two, depending yeah. on what we want to do. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think... We did great, man. It was a heck of a first day. We did a good, good job. For it was a <laughs> heck of a first day. So now we're going to take a break and eat because we haven't eaten and it's already 1.30. And then uh, Dave's probably going to get ready to hit back on the road and I'm going to try to clean up. And that's it. So this is, uh, this is day three of the install. And uh, the next video you'll see is probably when Dave comes back for day four when we start working on the patch bay. Yeah? Yeah. Well, we like it that the next thing, we have to figure out how to get... The fusion into the into the main bus. Yeah. Which I'm still thinking is going to be the patch bay. And if we're gonna if we have to use the patch bay, then the fusion stays in the rack. Then we, and we can put the yeah. we could put that fader port in there. In there. Yep, we could. If we, I mean it's there, the hole's there, you may as well use it. You know what I mean?
Yep. So, you know, so we could do that. Like I said, the, yeah, we, we start getting the hardware in. We start actually doing some actual real mixing with it. Although we have a pretty good sounding song right here. Right here. I mean, we haven't done anything to it except import the audio tracks. I bet you, and we will, if we EQ'd this up and, and massaged it a little and printed it back in, you know, without using any hardware. We haven't, there's not a single compressor even in a plug-in on this. Yeah. And we would do that. We have the SSL native, um, the version 2 native plugins, which is what we're going to try to use for the most part with the uh, with the plug-in controller. Yeah. So if we just use the SSL compressor with the SSL EQ and try to make it all SSL, although obviously you could do more, but sure. honestly on this system all I did was just install the two native plugins. That's it. I didn't want to put, this this setup will not have all the hundreds of plugins that are on the other system. This we're going to try to keep it simple as much as possible and maybe over time you have a few different choices but for the most part we're going to keep it simple because if we have too much options there's already too much going on here right now to, to now add a bunch of plug-in options would just complicate yeah. things more I mean, um, at, at this point it's like we got the audio rep right pretty good right you know so so that's what we'll do so uh, yeah. I guess we'll see you guys uh, in the next uh, the next video next week thanks for watching Let's eat some.